Hey folks, today is Friday, February 25th, 2022. As usual, my name is Jake Baldino, here to talk about all the video game news that has been going on this week. Now, it's quite a week for sure. We, uh, we do have a lot to talk about. Oh, but rain. yeah, we'll, all right, we'll get to that. The first thing is actually Fallout New Vegas 2. Yes, the words that have been in everybody's mouth for, and their brains for a long time seems like it might actually be a thing. Now, this of course comes after uh, the news from last year where Xbox acquired Bethesda. As you probably know, Xbox also owns Obsidian, the people behind Fallout New Vegas and many other RPGs. So a lot of people were saying, wait a minute, can this end up being a, pe a perfect storm, a, a recipe for a potential new Fallout New Vegas? Well, it seems like that actually potentially could be the case. Now, take this all with a grain of salt, of course. This is all still rumors and stuff. Uh, this is according to uh, VentureBeat's Jeff Grubb, the journalist who often gets a lot of scoops. He said on his Giant Bomb show that this is very early, but people have begun to have talks and say these words in sentences, and those words are Obsidian and New Vegas too. We're talking years and years away. There's at least an interest and conversations happening about making something like that actually a reality. A lot of people at Microsoft think that this could work, and there's a lot of interest to make it happen. So again, that's really all there is, but that's still pretty exciting. The fact that those conversations even technically can happen is a big win, and that helps a lot more than it seeming like a, an impossible mountain to move, and when everything's under one umbrella, it could happen. What, what I feel like is like this, this world is becoming crazy, obviously for many terrible things that are going on in the world right now, but also for the fact that like, if you like things, you're getting everything you want. Like we just had a bunch of Spider-Mans on the same screen together. Now we're getting a f maybe Fallout New Vegas too. Like I just never expected anything like this to happen. Again, it's not confirmed, it's not definite, but what I'm trying to say is that crazier things have happened uh, with brands and corporations and video games and movies. So. It could happen, where just a couple of years ago, it seemed like it would never, ever happen. And of course, not to leave Obsidian out of the conversation, uh, they have gone on record over the years saying they would love to make another one. So there you have it. What I wanna hear from you guys though is like, what can you imagine a new Fallout Vegas even being like? Would they just do it in the Fallout 4 engine? Granted, this is many years away. Would it be done in the Fallout 5 engine? Is there even gonna be a Fallout 5? There's so many questions, so Let's talk about this stuff down in the comments. Also, one other wild story, if we're sticking with the crazy rumors and grains of salt types of things, uh, a apparent take two patent has been floating around online and it seemingly su suggests some new online game and map technology. And a lot of people are expecting it's for the eventual new Grand Theft Auto 6. Uh, this patent details player switching in online sessions in real time in really, really big multiplayer maps. So if anything, this is just kind of maybe hinting towards Grand Theft Auto 6 having an even bigger online component. Again, it's small, it's just popping up. We don't have a bunch of information and it could be BS, but it was floating around and we figured we'd share. But in other big video game corporation news, it seems like the mega giant Call of Duty could be taking a year off. Yes, reports are actually suggesting that uh, there's a Call of Duty game still slated for this year. Uh, that's in the works, but the 2023 game might be delayed and Call of Duty will skip a year, which is pretty wild. They've been consistently churning out the Money Machine Call of Duty games every year for many, many years now. And it seems like they're finally gonna take a damn break. Whether this is stuff from COVID or the fact that, you know, there is a big acquisition sale going on with Activision Blizzard at the moment. I think that's a good thing. And like, I don't play a lot of Call of Duty, but I, I do think the way things are going, it's better to take a game and stick with it and support it. For something like Call of Duty, it makes sense. Uh, and Activision has updated and clarified uh, to gaming news websites and stuff saying, hey, we got a bunch of stuff planned for Warzone and all that stuff. So there's still going to be stuff to play. Like I don't think Call of Duty players are really thirsty for new things right this second, but I think skipping a year just lets them really take the time to focus, hone and develop and really make a good one because every year there's great things about a Call of Duty game and there's bad things about a Call of Duty game. And everybody has their own thing, you know, whether it's the campaign or if it's the multiplayer balancing not being right or the maps not being good enough. So take your time and get that shit right. So I look at this as less like, uh oh, trouble for Call of Duty and more just like industry shifts and stuff like that. But anyway, enough of that stuff. Let's talk about something cool. Elden Ring. Happy Elden Ring Day. The game's out. Uh, we've been playing it for like a week uh, for review and stuff, and it's great. We really, really love it. We're obsessed with it. We want to finish this video so we can go 
continue to play it. Are you still looking up build guides already now? What? Yes. Keep in mind though, it's now coming out that uh, the newest patch, like the day one patch, is giving some performance issues, specifically around PC. Now in, in our before you buy, I mentioned that we did see some issues, but it seems like now upon launch, those issues may have gotten worse, so keep your eyes peeled for that. I always recommend pay attention to the nerds, the frame counters, if you care about that stuff, like Digital Foundry. Bandai Namco did say they are looking into it. Uh, they are aware of the issues, uh, so don't let that totally hamper your excitement, but not to be the negative person, but like it's also from software, and they tend to take a while to update things, especially on the PC side, so yeah. That being said, regardless of the technical issues and frame rate problems, it's a damn good game. Oh, and in case you missed it last weekend, after the Friday show, Street Fighter VI was announced. We don't know a lot. We do know that we're getting more information uh, this summer, but all we really got was a quick tease cinematic trailer with a big, thick Ryu. Like, look at him. Like, he, he's got like the Adam Driver chest going on here. This is insane. Street Fighter VI, this time they're all extremely wide. <laughs> uh, hey, uh, as of right now, that's all we know. We got a logo. A lot of people are mad at the logo, but uh, like I said, we're gonna hear more hopefully this summer. Is it going to be a 2022 game? We don't know for sure yet, but that's where we're at. Hey, next up, big thanks to NordVPN for sponsoring this video. Online security should be everybody's top priority. Uh, we've been using NordVPN here at the office on our machines and on my phone. With it, all of your internet data stays safe behind a wall of next-gen encryption. And what I love the most about NordVPN is that it just protects your data. They have a strict no logs policy, so your private data is never collected, shared, or sold. And they have a ton of VPN servers in 59 countries for not only the security, but for fast, stable connections and benefits like instant access to hundreds of streaming websites throughout the world. It's super easy to use and set up on all of your devices and then once it's set up, it's basically one click and you're good to go. Plus it's got some sweet and simple Chrome and Firefox extensions too, which I like. So if you've been waiting on getting a VPN, it's time. Take advantage of an exclusive deal and celebrate Nord's 10 year anniversary. New users actually get a surprise gift when they sign up at nordvpn.com slash gameranks. It's risk-free with Nord's 30 day money back guarantee. So again, that's nordvpn.com slash gameranks or click the link in the description down below to check it out. And big thanks to NordVPN for sponsoring our videos. Next up, we're gonna move on to PlayStation news uh, with Sony's possible competitor to Game Pass, their Game Pass equivalent, according to, once again, uh, Game industry uh, journalist and scooper Jeff Grubb, apparently this thing is pretty close to launch. How do you get scoops like that? How do you, how do you just get people to tell you video game secrets? I, nobody, like, I thought, like, I feel like I could get, nobody wants to tell me secrets. No one tells us anything. No, probably because we suck. Definitely. So now both Jeff Grubb and uh, Bloomberg have confirmed that this is going to be a three-tiered service with like uh, different levels of subscription. Uh, there is going to be a streaming option involved in that, uh, access to games. How exactly it's completely rolling out still, we don't know for sure. Some things are a little murkier there, uh, but the code name for it, as you may have heard, is called Spartacus, which is like way too cool of a name for something like this, but uh, hey. The most interesting thing is that like the premium tier of this uh, that you can pay for the subscription, uh, seemingly is going to give access to classic games. We don't know exactly what that means as of right now, but apparently that's going to be a big aspect of it. And does that mean like we're gonna be able to access way more PS1 and PS2 games or something like that? Or are they gonna lean on that power? That could be pretty cool, uh, an interesting way for them to really stand out. I, I don't know. Sony handles things very differently here, like in terms of backwards compatibility and stuff. So maybe this is their answer. Uh, this has also been fueled by a Gex trademark being renewed that like set the internet kind of kind of a flame for a second there Excuse me? yeah what yeah i don't know really? yeah I, that it might be not connected but like if if gex is returning uh can we get croc to return and like i said last week can we get tomba to return and insert various other you know mascots like um where's cameo elements of power remember that Ugh. Anyway, that's where it's at, and the highest price tier, according to this report, is going to be $16 a month. Again, it's like we have some information, but not the full picture, so I'd say don't freak out about anything yet. Uh, what I will do, of course, at the very least, is link this story and all the stories we've talked about down in the description below so you can check it out for yourself. Oh, and by the way, in case you missed sticking with Sony news, uh, we've been talking about the incremental announcements and updates about the PlayStation VR 2. Uh, we've had looks at the controllers and just generally the tech specs and everything about 
about it. Uh, but now we finally have a look at the headset itself. They finally dropped images and some news on the actual headset unit, and it looks pretty much like what you'd expect. I am still really curious as a fan of VR. I'm really curious to see what this thing does and how it helps the VR market. Also, like every week, got a couple fun things we want to link in the description down below. Just two things this week. The first is a trailer for a game called Wanted Dead. Uh, this looks like a very smaller style, low budget project, uh, but with some cool sword and gunplay action uh, with a female protagonist. And it seems a little corny, but also over the top in just the right ways. I don't know, it was just some random game that like flew across my desktop and I was like, what? what is this game? So I figured I'd throw it out there for you guys. Uh, also, uh, we have a video for the Elden Ring trailer, uh, D-Made in PS1 graphics. We always link this stuff, it's always so cool. Uh, this is the first big Elden Ring trailer and to see it all pixelated and blocky, but like perfectly done is awesome. And also in case you missed it, Rockstar finally has given us an update about uh, fixing the GTA Trilogy remaster. They said on social media, new patches are coming next week for the Grand Theft Auto Trilogy Definitive Edition across all platforms. We appreciate the community's patience and support. Like we said in our videos, that game definitely needed more time in the oven and it definitely needed more care and appreciation considering the history, the legacy of those games. So I'm curious to see if these fixes are enough and I'm curious to see how big they are. But also technically, which is weird to say, but like today is technically the launch of the Steam Deck. So if you're watching this on Friday and you are one of the first people to get in one of those Q1 reservation lines, uh, you're going to be getting an email apparently from Valve that lets you finally confirm and buy your Steam Deck. You're gonna have 72 hours to actually respond to that email. I'm telling you guys this because this information was a little buried on their FAQ section and I forgot what the deal was. Uh, so that's a little heads up, a little PSA for you if you did manage to jump in and get a reservation in that line. The way they're doing this is so weird uh, because of supply issues and stuff like that, I assume. But along with that, we're probably gonna start seeing more formal reviews of the device roll out. So that's something to look forward to. A, a, no, our review is is not gonna be, we're, our review's gonna be really late. We didn't get one, we don't get anything. Still incredibly excited for that device. I think it's gonna be like a huge freaking game changer and we can't wait to make videos about it. So that's the gist and that's the news for this week. So let's talk about everything that has been going on. What do you think about Street Fighter VI? What do you think about that big boy? Do you think a Fallout New Vegas could actually happen under Xbox's watch? And uh, what do you think about this potential Sony PlayStation version of Xbox Game Pass? If you're a Sony customer, are you interested? And of course, let's talk about the Steam Deck for my PC fans. What do you think about this thing? Let's talk about anything in the comments. And of course, I will leave that pinned comment so you can let us know what you're playing this weekend for our research. Uh, let us know what you're thinking about Elden Ring so far and the performance stuff. If you're jumping in, definitely wanna hear from you. We're gonna be down in the comments as much as possible, but things get a little crazy. So if you wanna yell at me directly, of course, you can always find me on Twitter and Instagram at Jake Baldino and on my other YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Jake Baldino. But thank you guys for being here, getting caught up with us every damn Friday. We're always here for you. Good luck out there in the world. Be safe. Clicking the like button is all you got to do for us. It helps us out. So thank you. But I'm Jake Baldino. Pizza's on me.